you know, one of the, the one of the goals after a bye week is to not come out flat. You want to you want to keep that edge. How do you personally try to approach it to make sure you're ready for for that next game? Uh, for me personally, it's just about preparing the same way I would as if it was a game week. So kind of not breaking that routine or that habit of, you know, getting us getting myself physically and mentally prepared to play. And even though we didn't have a game last week, it was still, you know, and I was still in that same mindset and that same mentality. You get an opportunity this week to face TCU, a team that, uh, you know, you have some connection there, at least a, an offer there. And what, what's your thoughts as you get ready to, to, to play the Horn Frogs? Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. You know, it's my first time going back home to Texas to play football, especially since I've been in college. So it's a very exciting week for me, and you know, they're a good opponent. I watched them play against Iowa State. You know, they fell short, but they were still good, and you know, still some notable things that they do well on defense. Let's go Darnell Dixon and then Jay Drew. Dion, the identity of the offense so far this season is kind of a big strike, you know, quick, quick kind of plays, getting in the end zone quickly. Do you, do, have you been focusing on trying to get longer drives to chew up the clock a little bit, or does it really matter to you guys as long as you score? Uh, our biggest focus is, you know, just trying to be more efficient. I feel like that's where our point of emphasis is, and converting on third downs, getting ourselves out of third and long situations, and you know, just efficiently moving the ball down the field. We do do a good job of, you know, having explosive plays, which is great. But we want to be able to hold the ball longer and, you know, chew up a little bit of time on the clock so our defense doesn't have to be on the field as much. Ian, you mentioned you were from Texas. What is, what kind of, what is TCU's brand? What, what do you think of when you think of TCU football? Uh, yeah, um, you know, notoriously I've always known them as a, you know, uh, one of the, the more sleeper programs in Texas, you know, because you got UT, um, you know, people like to, you know, ride with Baylor a little bit, but um, I've always seen them as a good program, and I feel like even in the most recent years, even last year, you know, they've kind of changed the face of their program and, you know, their mentality and how, you know, their culture is. So for me, uh, TCU is a school that, you know, is a great opponent, you know, they're competitive, you know, they're going to play fast and, you know, they're going to play the whole four quarters because, you know, even if you saw the 2022 season, you know, they won a lot of games towards the uh, second half of the of the game. So, you know, I feel like this is a good opponent and a great school. Go ahead, Jared. Yeah, you mentioned that you saw some good things from them defensively. What, what challenges do they present? What, what does the, the offense have to do to be successful this week? Yeah, you know, they run a unique defense, you know, three high safeties, you know, three down front. And so they got a lot of layers to their defense. I feel like, you know, having an odd front, three down, creates a lot of wrinkles for the offense, you know, protection-wise and even blocking some things up in the run game. So, you know, they create a, a, a few challenges for us. But, you know, one thing I have noticed is they pursue to the ball very well, you know, and, you know, they're going to give you everything they have, so. We'll have some more questions from Kevin Reynolds and then Sean Walker. When you were coming out of high school, um, did you ever visit TCU? Um, and was Sonny an analyst on that staff when when you were coming out of high school, or like what was the? Have you ever had an interaction with Sonny Dykes at all? Uh, no, I don't think I have because when I so I, TCU was my f well, second offer, so my first Power Five offer, and that was the first place I visited, um, <clears throat> and that was when. Uh, coach Looper was the running back coach. Um, Sonny hadn't gotten there yet. I don't know if he was an analyst. Um, I don't remember meeting him before, um, but I do know, you know, I've ran into a couple of past teammates that was at SMU and that encountered him, so. Go ahead, Sean. Neon, you teed us up a little bit earlier, and so I just wanted to follow up. You said you watched a lot of football this weekend. Uh, college, NFL, whatever it was, what was the game or what was the result that kind of jumped out at you the most where you were like, oh, okay, that just happened? Yeah, it was definitely the Texas-Oklahoma game. That was a crazy game. 
Uh, I set my alarm to make sure I woke up in time to watch that. I wanted to watch the whole pregame and everything. So that was a game that I was pretty excited about. Um, it was crazy. Um, and I, I honestly, you know, I, I feel like we saw some things in that game that, you know, we could take advantage of and when we play these two opponents down the line. So that was one of my favorite games all day. I was just going to say, were you watching that game as a Texas football guy? Because I understand Red River is a little bit of a religion down there. So <laughs> with your analyst hat on, go in, I think I could take advantage of this. I think I could do that. Yeah, I, I feel like I was watching from my analyst hat on. Um, you know, I, I wasn't really rooting for either side. I was just watching just because I know we play both of these opponents. And, you know, I was looking for any edge that we could get possibly, you know, just going into those games. Okay, I think that's all the questions for today, Dion. Thanks for being here. Cool, thank you.